Hi, ladies, and welcome to the Alchemical Empress page. I'm your host, Nicola. And I said hi, ladies, because this video is specifically for my sisters of African descent around the diaspora. You know, sometimes you do research, you read, then you think about life experiences, you think about certain situations and circumstances, and you begin to put pieces of the puzzle together and certain things that you hadn't even thought about, maybe even for years, for years. And then all of a sudden something pops up and you see how that fits into the piece of the puzzle of something that you're learning about recently and, and, and things begin to make a little bit more sense to you. So I, I had one of those moments today. Well, I actually been thinking about it for a minute, but today was kind of strong on me where I really wanted to take the time to talk about this to my sisters specifically. I really hope that it reaches the, the right people uh, that need to hear this. And I really, really, really hope that this video reaches my sisters on the continent right now, because uh, what's happening on the continent is very critical. Uh, so it's imper imperative that you hear what I have to say. I've recently been talking about Mami Wata's book, Ancient Sibyls. I have the background thing on here so you can't see it. I'm sorry. Um, the Sibyls, the first prophetess of Mami Wata, the theft of African prophecy by the Catholic Church. I've been reading from this book. I've been talking about the ancient Sibyls and our ancient mothers and learning so much about who we were from the beginning of time, that we were the very first prophetess on the planet. Uh, that we were the ones that laid the groundwork for spirituality and sacerdotal power around the world, around the planet, the whole planet. We set the tone for what it meant to live in symbiotic relationship with the elements and the animals. And as other cultures begin to come into uh, this power of, of seeing who we were and what we have, uh, they wanted it. And if they couldn't have it, they wanted a part of it. Meaning um, being uh, a part of the lineage of the bloodline of these women, these ancient women in some way, shape, form, or fashion. So what I'm seeing as we're going through this turning of events, you know, we went through all of the and if, if you haven't read the book or if you haven't seen any of my videos, I, I invite you to go back through my videos and look at uh, who are the Sybils, look at Black people, what happened. Uh, look at those videos and you can kind of get a gist of where I'm, where I'm going with this video. Um, before there was ever political power on the planet, there was sacerdotal power, there was power, there was divine power, that was, that was the authority on the planet divinity, not uh, politics. And these powers that be that came in and raided these places wanted that power. A lot of our brothers broke away from their mothers and decided they wanted patriarchal power. And so they fought them for that power. And that power has been the whole uh, reason why so much of our ancient history has been lost demonized, turned against us, twisted and turned all types of ways, right? And I've been learning about this along the way. But then something, a um, couple of things that made me recently think about my life in the dating world before I got married. Uh, some years back when I was still out there dating and I was waiting for my husband to come along, um, I was running into young men who were white that kept trying to get with me. And I was not understanding why. And uh, it wasn't like we had anything um, of interest that that was uh, the reason we should be connecting. We weren't sometimes even in the same age group, but they seemed to be coming at me full force trying to get with me, you know, and I'm trying to figure out what's the deal, right? I was turning them down left and right, but I'm still trying to understand what's what's up with you. You you kind of young. Why you why are you trying to 
why are you trying to hit on somebody my age and my and my stage and and, and what's up what's up what's up <laughs> so finally you know and at this point I'm over 40 at that point in my in my in my life because I got married a little later in life again um I'm probably around 41 42 at the time and this kid he's probably like 22 23 and I'm like, what? Okay, make me understand why are you pursuing me so hard? I I really want to understand what's going on with you. You know, I mean, I'm cute, but still, that's not it. What's what's really happening? <laughs> and finally, he said to me, "I was told by my elders that you haven't really become a man until you first have sex with the mother blood. I said, hmm? Yes. They tell us that in order for us to really truly claim that we are truly a man, you must first have sex with the mother blood. Make me understand it. He couldn't really explain that, but it he what he what he really actually let me know that is that it was a rite of passage for him to take a black woman. And if you could bag an older black woman, it's probably a bigger notch. And I'm like, whoa, okay. I didn't know about that one. Still, not knowing our history the way I'm learning about it now, I didn't know what that really truly meant until recently. And I'm like, the mother blood. Hmm. See, all the many, many times they have called us mammy in the most negative, derogatory way. They've always knew, known who we were. And they've always understood that to suppress us and subdue us and to take our power was a way that they could stay on top. But we not knowing who we are because we've lost our way, sometimes surrender to that, sometimes submit to that, sometimes not knowing the game play into that. So, you know, I just did the um, movie review. It wasn't even a, a movie review, but it was a review of uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, where you got to see how the Osage Nation came into oil. And all of a sudden, these white men came flocking into that town. And all of a sudden, they just fell in love with the Native woman, taking over their rights and their stuff and becoming rich overnight because they made these. Native American women feel like they love them. And I was like, this game that they're playing, it has never, ever, ever changed. It has never changed. So I used the Osage Nation to talk about what's happening in Uganda. So Uganda comes into trillions of dollars worth of gold. And all of a sudden, because the Chinese are playing the white man's game now, all of a sudden now, Chinese men just love Ugandan women. Hmm. And everywhere there's a mineral rich space in Africa, all of a sudden, these men just so happen to fall in love with these women. Hmm. And so we, having been beaten down for so long and having gone through so much at the hands of patriarchal and racial discrimination and oppression and colonization and slavery and all types of things, many, many times go through what I would say generational low self-esteem and low, low self-worth. 
and it leaves us open and vulnerable to anybody that kind of looks like they care about us. And unfortunately, they don't. Recently, I've been listening to videos. They're actually putting it out there. They don't even care to tell you the truth of white women saying, yeah, they're getting with black men because they want their race to live on. And the only way their race is going to live on is to get the, the black man's blood. In order for their race to live on, they want to get some of the mother blood so that they can continue their lineage in this world because they know that they're dying out. And so what we have become to these people is a commodity. And what you think is love is this is nothing more than a transaction. Now you may be all in love because they've tricked and duped you up. Go ahead and look at uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. If you haven't seen it, this girl went all the way to the end with this dude thinking it was about love. And this boy, all oh, he did, he killed off her whole family for the transaction of her money. And she couldn't see it until the very end after he almost killed her. And that's just a storyline of a true story that happened to many, many, many of those women. And I'm looking at it happening to many, many, many of our women right now, but we are duped. We think they love us. Oh my goodness. We think that they're so in love with us all of a sudden. Really? And they're taking our rights right from under us, taking your mineral rights, taking your land, securing their future through your love, your, your love and your blood and your bloodline. And if there's a switch over back to sacerdotal power during this changeover, guess what they want to be able to claim? Your blood. Your blood. If you have that royal blood, that ancient blood that runs in your vein that goes all the way back to antiquity to these ancient mothers, they want a part of that so they can continue to be in power some kind of way. And so I am talking to my sisters because I want us to wisen up a bit. I want us to be a little bit more on guard with our hearts in our minds because people are after what we have and we don't even see what we have. And that's the problem. We can't even see what we have, but you have the mother blood. You have the mineral rights. You have the land. You're indigenous to every land on, on every piece of land on this planet. You're indigenous to it. We laid the groundwork around this entire planet and they know this and they know this. But you don't know this. And they're taking advantage of you. I, I don't know who or how this video can reach my Ugandan sisters, even, even my Nigerian sisters. I see a lot of that happening over there too, where these Chinese people are coming over there and marrying everybody and, 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 and basically securing their rights and securing their, their future off of your back. But I, I pray that you wake up. I pray that you wake up. And even if you feel like you don't own no land or you don't have no rights to anything, uh, they know what you have. They know what you own. Even if even if the government has tricked you into feel, feeling like you don't know who you are and what you have. And and even those of us who here in the in America, you have many of us, especially many of us from my, where I am from, the Louisiana, Mississippi area. We have we have lineage lineage all the way back to these ancient mothers. I'm I'm positive. I I, I feel it in my bones because our spirituality is so rich in that way. And we've carried so much with us that we don't even remember 
where we got it from and how we got it, but we still got some of that stuff, right? They know this. They know this. You don't know this. And you're giving up your stuff too easily. You're giving your stuff away too easily. You're giving all your stuff away too easily. And I'm asking you to be conscious of the mother blood. Be conscious about who you think loves you. That's coming from some other culture, space, and place trying to get a hold of your body, your rights, your land, in the name of love. <laughs> All in the name of love. You know, some of them taken by guns and force, and some of them taken by playing that love game on us. You know what I'm saying? And it's happening around the planet. It is literally happening around the planet. Ladies, we got to wake up. We got to wake up and we got to see the game for what it is. We got to wake up and we got to do a little bit better of guarding our hearts and minds. Uh, we got to do a little bit better of seeing who we are and coming back into our rightful place, getting our esteem back, doing that inner work. Doing that inner work so that we start finding our way back to feeling solid about ourselves again. Doing that ancestral work so that we come back into the space and place of feeling good about who we are, where we come from, our lineage. Doing this history so that we continue to figure out who we are and, and, um, and not allow people to misuse and abuse our power all the time. Because that's what's been happening to us. That's why we fell so deeply asleep is, you know, people took what we had and then they used it against us and basically has been using our power and our strength against us, you know? So we have got to wake up to who we are. And, and you know, the most painful thing to me about this whole wake up part of it is so many of us are still so deeply indoctrinated by religion. We literally have to fight you to give you your power back. Like, girl, this belongs to you. It's, it's yours. It's always been yours. Don't tell me that you can't say nothing about my Jesus. You can't say nothing about, you know, and like literally have to fight you to give you your stuff back. <laughs> it's your power. You let them people take your power from you like that. That's your power. But we literally have to fight you to tell you who you are. And it's sad and it's painful. But I have to go through this time and time again with people that don't know <sighs> that the sacerdotal power truly belongs to you and that you are the ancients that everybody wants to be a part of your mother blood, your strength, your courage, your everything. They're after your stuff. My beautiful, beautiful black sisters, African sisters, whatever you want to call us, indigenous sisters, please wake up. Please stop allowing these people to take your stuff. Stop it. Please wake up. Somebody send this to a Ugandan woman who thinks she's so in love with these Chinese men. Please, 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 please send it. Please send it. Tell her to read the books. Tell her to get the history on this. Tell her to look at her ancient antiquity history so that we can come back to ourselves. These women who are in, uh, I don't know, Kenya and Nigeria that's fallen for this Chinese uh, game that the white man has already played on us. Please, please, please send them this video. Send them this video. Help them to wake up. Help them to stop this in insanity of thinking that these men love you. They do not love you. They do not love you. They are playing a love game. They're love bombing you. They're playing a love game with you to take your mineral rights and your land over there, just like they did with the Osage Nation over here. See, this game has been played so many times already. It's a game. It's a game. And if they can't take it that way, they at least want to marry you so they can take the mother blood. And if it can't do that, they at least want to date you so they can have sex with you so they can say they have become a man. <laughs> Y'all better wake up. Y'all better wake up. Y'all better wake the fuck up. <laughs> I love you, sisters. Send this to a sister. 
that you know need to wake up from this game before she give all her shit away. Send it to her. Send it. Send it all around Africa. Send it. <laughs> send it. All right. I'll see y'all on the next one.